Hi everybody, welcome to our next art lesson. So we've been doing botanical drawing and we've looked at the work of um, Sir Joseph Banks and we've looked at the works of Margaret Mee and I don't know about you but I found it really quite interesting how um, the, the adventures that they went on and I absolutely loved watching the video of the Moonflower last week um, that looked at Margaret Mee's trip to the Amazon, um, the Amazon rainforest and her discoveries. Um, I think it's really quite exciting to think of art in that way, that it can be a real adventure. And I know there's so many budding artists out there, lots of you in year six are so good at art. And to think about it being like an adventure of discovery is quite it's quite exciting, isn't it? So today we're going to get on with actual drawing. We've done some comparison and we've done some critique and they're really good skills to have, but we're going to do some actual drawing today. So first of all, I want us to think about what the key features of a botanical drawing are. Now, if we're at school, we could have a good chat about it, but we're not. So have a little think for a moment. And I'll tell you a couple of the things that I have discovered. So, for in a botanical drawing, well, a botanical drawing um, shows the form, that's the shape of something, the colour and the details of a plant species. So it's not just like drawing any kind of random plant type thing. It's really detailed and specific to plant species, the, the type of plant that there is. Now they're intended to be a scientific record that can be used to accurately identify plants. And we've talked about that before, haven't we? Um, in the olden days, people just had drawings to know whether a plant might be poisonous or whether they could use it for medicine, whether it would actually be really good for them. So they're a scientific record. Um, usually it's live plants that are used for the observation. So whoever is the artist is in front of the real live plant and is drawing it as it is growing. And they can be monochrome, which is black, or black and white, and, and they can be in colour as well. Um, and if they're black and white, they're often really labelled with the, with the colour. That's how Sir Joseph Banks would have done it in the very early days, if you remember. So, we are going to have a look at a real plant. Now, I'm hoping at your house, you have a plant of some kind. If you haven't got a plant, use a piece of fruit, because fruits come from a, a plant. But I went in my garden and... Um, I was hoping to find a flower, to be honest with you, but I, there's no flowers because of the time of year. Not, not in my garden, there isn't anyway. But there are lots of things growing and there are lots of plants. And I, I found this, so I'm, I'm glad I found it really, because otherwise I would have sat in the garden and done this. And if the weather's good enough, go in the garden and sit with the real life plant. But what I did was I found a bit, a branch that had broken off one of my plants. So this is what I've got, it's quite long, and this is a piece of bamboo out of my garden um, and you can see that it snapped off probably in the wind. Um, so there's my piece of bamboo and I want us to find our plant and really, really examine it. What do we notice about it and how can we use our pencil to represent this and what would Sir Joseph Banks have done? What would Margaret Mee have done? So if I examine this further, I, can, I know that it's broken at the end, I know that, but also there's a little branch here that's broken off too. So I think what I might do is just cut that where it is so that I don't have this massive piece of bamboo in my face. So I've just got a smaller bit there um, and actually, this one's this one looks like it it hasn't quite got the life in it that it should have because obviously it's broken away from its its root. But as I just study it, I can see that it's got a really slim stem, which is a cylinder shape, and it actually tapers. It's it's thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. It's really smooth as well. So this bamboo colour is kind of, 
it's kind of like yellowy brown but the texture of it is so smooth although there are a few little bruises and, and marks on it and then there's these bits as well here these little knobbly bits um, and because we are going to learn some of the key features of a botanical drawing one of the things that they really did was label the the elements of the plant um, and I, I had to google some of this so you might have to do the same because you might not have these bits on the type of plant that you've got you, you probably will on a lot of them though these knobbly bits I discovered are called nodes um, and they are actually where other leaves grow from or other shoots grow from and you can see that up here so there's my there's the little node and then there's this tiny little branch that's coming out of it and another little node in there um, and out of this side another one there and a little node and then another bit coming out and then we've got these really long thin kind of pointy leaves that are actually they feel quite dry they don't feel anywhere near as smooth as the stem they feel quite dry um, and they're really quite bright green in colour although this one can you see it it looks like it's dying a bit looks a bit dead so if I was jo Sir Joseph Banks where would I start what would I do and we're gonna use some of our skills as artists to be able to draw our plants and then we're going to label it up and really turn it into a proper botanical drawing so i'm going to start with the outline of my stem and i found out that this is actually called the culm c-u-l-m culm um, and that means this a hollow stem on a piece of grass basically and that's what bamboo is it's hollow inside so it's it's um that's why bamboo is used as canes and things because it, it actually there's nothing inside it so this is where i'm going to start i've got myself a piece of paper my artist pad and uh, i've got a normal pencil and if we were at school we might have been able to use some of the um some of our shading pencils you know we could have chosen an HB for example if we wanted to do something really dark but if you've got them at home go for it but if you haven't and you're like me and you've just got a normal HB writing pencil there's still loads we can do with it so I've got my pencil I've got a rubber and I have got a ruler as well my Harry Potter ruler it's the only one I could find borrowed it off Lucy but I'm going to use that later on when it comes to labelling because the rest of it is going to be freehand. So I'm going to start with the culm. That's a good word, isn't it? The culm, which is the stem. And I'm going to draw. I'll see if I can kind of show you as I go along. I'm going to draw exactly what I can see in front of me. So I've got a bit of the culm, which actually then joins a node. And I'm just using... A bit of a oh it's like a knobbly bit I'm using a little bit of a curved line here just to show that it's actually a cylinder this bit and I'll pop that on, on the end it's kind of a bit broken so I'm kind of just gonna hash that a little bit I'm gonna hatch it a bit and then so I've got a little bit of node and I've got a little branch that's going off in that direction and then there's a node on that bit um, and then another little thin branch and then the main one again coming down and if I really inspect it the next bit that I've got to look this is where I'm at the next bit that I've got to is actually um, a bit of a bruise on the stem so I'm going to put that on to show that's a little bit of a blemish on it and a bit of a bruise but we'll do a bit more shading once I've got the actual shape of it I just wanted to mark that bit to show the fine detail of it then I've got another node that's the knobbly bit where another branch might come out of but there isn't one coming out of that so I'm just going to carry on straight then another node which looks a bit like a double a double node because it's got three tiny thin branches coming out of it um, a couple in different directions and then another really thin bit coming out of there and then the one that goes kind of all the way to the end 
and turns into a couple more branches. So that's my starting point. You see what I've done, I've just copied the, the stem in the middle and I've really examined it and it's already starting to take shape but now I need to add the leaves. So I'm going to add the leaves. I'm doing this quite quick just to show you and I think you could take a bit more time on this. Pop a bit of music on and get yourself a drink and a snack and just really enjoy this, especially if you go out in the garden to do it. Get yourself wrapped up warm and make yourself a hot chocolate or something. Um, get yourself cosy with a scarf on. And then this could be something that you, you really, really, really enjoy. I love drawing. I find it really relaxing. I think it's quite good for our well-being. And for me, it just makes me feel more relaxed. It makes me feel like I've achieved something as well when I, when I see what I've done at the end. I'm just making sure that the leaves are really the shape that I can see in front of me. And they, they kind of look... They just look like really long and thin, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to add a bit more detail. So there you go. That's that's where I'm at so far. These are the leaves, and then this is the the stem. But what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to add any colour to this one. You, you can add colour if you want to. You might want to do that at a different point. But this one, I'm just going to use the pencil. I'm going to try and shade it in a way that makes it just look really realistic. So I'm going to start with the um, the culm, the stem in the middle. And I'm going to just really carefully, see if I can show you, start darker at the bottom. So I'll do my shade and then I'm going to hatch it like this, but not go all the way. So can you still see that I've left a bit of white there? That gives us a highlight and then at the bottom we get this shadowy low light at the bottom and I'm going to follow that same pattern all the way along my stem which is obviously the cylinder. So if I gradually just, I'm going to press harder to make it, to make the dark bit and then I'm going to gradually take the pencil off and just hatch it along. And you can cross hatch if you want to, remember how to do that where you just you kind of just draw, draw in straight lines to hatch it and then if you want to cross hatch it you go back over them but I'm not going to do that this time because I think that hatching is probably the best technique that I could use for that at this at this point so there's I'm doing just a really thin little bit as well I'm at a bit of a funny angle and you can't you can't quite see what I've done anyway but and then I've got those blemishes that I want to just make a bit darker so that I can tell that there's them bruises on it. Oh, there we go. And can you see that's starting to look really 3D, isn't it? So I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves. I don't think, I don't think it helps for me to do that because you can't really see it, can you? Um, I'm going to do the leaves in the same way, but this time I'm going to add a bit of detail because the bamboo leaves aren't like other leaves that I've seen they don't sort of have a line down the middle and then go out like that. They've got lines, really gentle lines all the way across them. So it's again, it's a bit of hatching, but I'm just carefully placing the lines like that because you, you might not be able to see it, but the lines all run in that direction. And that one's obviously got a bit of a blemish on it as well. So I'm going to add that detail on there, just add a bit of, make it a bit darker and add a bit of depth to it. And then I'm going to just do those gentle hatches on all my leaves. And they're really thin, really thin leaves. They're quite, quite interesting. So there you go. They're my leaves that I've done. And then there's this, the uh, culm, the stem, which I've hope I've made look a bit 3D. And around the nodes as well, I've just added an extra bit of shadow just so you can see that it kind of sticks out from there. Now, your plants will look completely different to mine. It depends what you've got at your house. It depends what you've got in your garden. I almost wanted to get a bit of holly out of my garden, but then I noticed that this one is broken. Holly would be an interesting thing to draw. You might actually have some flowers or you might have something with berries on. You might have a plant in your house or you might have a bunch of flowers in your house or a piece of fruit, whatever it is, 
I want you to really investigate it. Really fine detail, everything that you possibly can. And use your shading, use a little bit of hatching on there. Make sure you've got highlights and lowlights just to show how 3D it is. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna label as, jo as Sir Joseph Banks would have done the different parts so I know what which bit is a node so I'm just going to label node and then this bit is called the culm as we discovered I also found out that the bit in between two nodes is actually called an internode so it's the bit that goes in the middle it's called an internode so I'm going to label that as well and then I've got my um, thin leaves. Um, I might label that it's it's hollow but smooth yellow exterior. Just put those notes on it. I might I might want to just write a little note about the kind of green that it is. It's it's almost like um, it's a bit lighter than grass green, isn't it? It's a it's a light, bright green with touches of brown and yellow. So I've just added that extra detail. Now you can see it, but I think my writing's going to be back to front because I've turned it. Um, that's the way my camera is. So I think my writing's back to front. But you can see how I've lo labelled the different parts of the plant. Now you might need to you might need to go on the internet and try and find out what the names are of the different parts of your plant if you don't spot those ones that are on mine but uh, lots of you will find nodes on there I'm I'm sure if it's a flower you might want to look at the the names of the actual parts of the head of the flower that could be really interesting and just like Sir Joseph Banks would do you might want to um, zoom in on one of the aspects of it so if I wanted to look at this node that's actually got three different branches coming off it. Um, and then I would label that with the node and the branches, but I, I could do that in much more detail just to the side there. And especially if you've got a flower, you might want to take part of the inside of the flower or kind of dissect it a little bit and draw just one aspect in really close detail. So. I really hope that you enjoy doing that. I quite enjoyed doing that and I think that I can't really I can't wait to see what you actually produce because I know that there's some amazing artists out there. Um and I think that some of the skills that we've put into practice today will serve us well over the next couple of weeks just as we look a little bit more into um things that Charles Darwin discovered and um you know, obviously looking at the botanical artist is just really key to our theme. But some of our pencil skills as well will come in handy as we investigate some of this stuff a little bit further. So do one. If you want to do some more, do some more. Do as many plants as you like and you could build up a bit of a bank of uh, botanical illustrations if you like. So I can't wait to see what you've done. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoy doing it as much as I've enjoyed teaching you it. So show me what you've done and I'll see you soon.